What I try to get young lawyers to think about is to be open to doing things you haven't done that you're not sure you can do, that you may fail at. It broadens your relationships and the people who might ultimately be your clients or be helpful to your clients. I was born in Hamburg, Germany, in 1933, and left Germany in the last days of December, 38. I was just a five-year-old told, this is where you're going. <laughs> Kristallnacht, of course, was in October, 38. My aunt and her two children, my first cousins, did not get away, and they were killed in concentration camps. A young man who was forced out of Germany in order not to be killed in a concentration camp is now ordered to go back to Germany to uh, protect the Germans. As an academic, you run your life and you decide what you want to do. It's your way of maintaining a lively contact with the next generation. And for me now, it's the next two or three generations. Having people sit together, have a meal or two or three together, helps build the personal relationships. And if I've got a personal relationship with you, and if I ask you a question, I think you'll give me an honest answer. And that's really what you want. The Treasury General Counsel at that time had 1,100 lawyers reporting to him. As an academic, you tend to think that anything that has your signature on it is something you want every word in that memo, article, to be exactly right. And what you do as a General Counsel, you read the last, the concluding paragraph and see whether that makes sense and you can live and say, okay, that's my view. What you've got to do is rely on members of the team. We had a very substantial amount of Iranian assets, banks and so forth, and they had our hostages. Since we didn't trust each other, 
how do you affect the trade? You need somebody other than us to hold the assets. And the first place that we looked to was the Bank of England. And they had all kinds of reasons why they really couldn't do it. The U.S. ambassador to England had set up a meeting for me with Margaret Thatcher. And she said, we will do anything we can to get the hostages freed. And when I met with the Bank of England folks, after that meeting, strangely enough, all the objections had disappeared. Now the next issue was sitting down and negotiating the terms. It flew to Algiers, where we were to meet. There were Algerians around the table, but no Iranians. The process would be, we tell the Algerians what we want to do in English, they would translate it into French, and from French into Farsi, and that would be transmitted to the Iranians, and the Iranians would respond in Farsi, get it translated into French, and then into English. And if you've ever played the game of telephone, you know that in that kind of a process, there are going to be misunderstandings. You listen, you talk to your team, we get the deal done. And I must say, seeing the airplane land in Algiers and then seeing the hostages depart was one of the most thrilling, emotionally laden events in my life. Every once in a while, I'd get a, a call and a big matter. You could do a lot of things that were not directly in the practice of law and still do your of counsel work at Sherman. They provide a great intellectual stimulation, and I think you do some good. I couldn't have done that in most other occupations. Interests outside yourself are important to a healthy attitude and healthy being. Your example is an inspiration for anybody who wants to challenge him or herself to have as interesting a life as possible. And there's a network of friends of Bob who are joined in their respect and affection for Bob, but also because of that, they tend to become friends of one another as well, which is wonderful.